country that you've seen on TV and read the newspapers, I've got to tell you that I'm actually against people that take drugs. Especially when you fucking take them off me. <laughs> <laughs> So my uncle took us everywhere. Remember it, boys, getting lifted over at turnstiles and all that. Great, mm. great day, uh, day out and all that. It was magnificent fun. All the way through my teens, great day adventure for me. I was old enough to go and launch, two story guys, 19 years of age, walked through Glasgow. When the Celtic game got cancelled, I thought, what the fuck am I going to do? I was unemployed, five in my pocket. So I come up with this great idea, as you do at 19. Go to bookies. <laughs> See if I can win some money and get my pals tonight. So I'm walking up by a place in Glasgow called the Apollo. I'm not there anymore, it's where the Raw fans play. All the amateur teams used to meet. Some of my pals were there, the Malt and I grew up. Mark, I can't have a game, can't be a part of the boys. And the manager says, Look, come and have a game, I'll get you a couple of beers after we're short of players. I thought, fuck, that'll do for me. So I mean, they come to us, boys. As you can imagine, I'm having a laugh with my pals in the changing room and I got to play this game. What I didn't realise, guys, was there was five scouts watching the boy that I was playing against. Now, I don't know what the fuck happened to him. <laughs> <laughs> I had no a bad game. One <laughs> of the scouts were talking to me. Three professionals want me to go on trial, two junior clubs want me to sign. One of the junior clubs, five minutes from where I stayed, no chance of signing. You know, it's like, guys, all your pals can do. Get a hard time. Not a chance. And I'll never forget this guy's name. We guy called Willie Cassidy. He was the manager of a team called Johnson Borough. Just outside Paisley. He says, come and sign for us. We'll still let you go and try over the professional club. I said, why would they do that? He says, we'll give you 500 pounds. I said, it's cash. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go, guys. Two stories. Sitting in the bar one Saturday night. Come down. 505 pounds in my pocket. Two <laughs> <laughs> beers in my belly. And the whole world's in a better place. We'll say, did it change your life? You know, the best with terms in football. So let's fuck what we do with that, guys. What changed my life was that £500. Hairdressers in the Monday morning died me hip block. Well, gentlemen, let's be honest, nobody thinks it's fucking change a series, do they? <laughs> Do you think referees shite themselves when they get eyeballs to the Celtic? Andrew was talking about earlier. I don't think they do, I just think they're biased bastards. I don't prove that. Here's truly playing at eyeballs. Well, second leg of the couple of winning 1 0. Jimmy Bowden scored 1 0, couple of minutes to go. And one of the best players in Scotland has ever produced, and I was honoured to play with this guy, Andy Winston, but a guy called David Cooper. He's running by me and he's laughing. I said, Cook, what the fuck are you laughing at? He says, he won't go to whistle, we score. <laughs> <laughs> Captain. <laughs> 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 he came in here and he saw McDougal. Get to McDougal. 
me, I'm saying, man, used to get you don't get me here. I mean, I'm fucking, <laughs> I'm thinking, hope today, I fucking can't believe that, man. <laughs> they get fucking, you don't get me in my first game, and you don't pitch to the same guys. <laughs> Playing against the Dutch champions, Fiennaud. I'm standing in the centre circle, waiting the Fiennaud team come out. Out they come, I'm a big pal, Frank McDougall. Out they come, in amongst them, Rijkaard, Hullet, and Croy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting with Dougal, I say, fuck me, Frank, it's not going to get much better than this. <laughs> How wrong was I, guys? Because two weeks later, we had to go to Holland. <laughs> <laughs> Aberdeen, he was a wonderful partner for me. He um, could show me Aberdeen. He showed me down a wee team in London called West Ham. Mm -hmm. I went down to London, stuck a wonderful partnership. This wee guy called Tony Cotty. Great oh, little striker, yeah. German, magnificent striker. Best finisher I've ever played, to be honest. He was different. I'd be the old fucker. <laughs> <laughs> you get that with people, don't you? My first season down there, we scored 56 goals between us. With the wee bet at the start of the season, because you were scoring the most, I get 29 I years, so we know who won that fucking bet. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> but it was different class pitch the same boys. This wee boy from Auckland going away to London and scoring all the time and doing all right in the football park. <laughs> 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 Achievement, Frank. And you don't like it when I look at him and say, Get engaged to a pace, we bump shagging our balls. <laughs> <laughs> Big jobs, 
with no picnic stall. Is it that was where he's a fucking idiot? <laughs> <laughs>
was always late on Monday. Always late on Monday. I'm going to lay every week as to why. Every Monday morning, I, for me to get by the pool for 10 o'clock, and then I had to get an 8 o'clock brace every flight from London, which is very hard to do. <laughs> <laughs> they have to wait for it, I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. I'm very seldom wait for it, but I sometimes miss that. And Bill's saying to me, why are you always late? I'm going to let me see you. I used to wake up on Monday morning. Look who it was, man. Fuck, I'm taking a fine. Yeah, I'm going to the tent past 9.30, it's my one flight. I got there at 10 o'clock, time I get training, find again. And it all came to the head boys, we were knocked out in the League Cup. And the manager took us to Portugal. Doesn't matter who you're with. You go away for the week, a weekend or just go away on a trip. What's he do? Who am I sharing with? Morgan. Next thing you do, upstairs, Dr. Casey, downstairs, matches the kick. That's it, we done. And the manager walked over and said, Peter, whatever you lads, the weekend's on my car. Flung this envelope on a table, full of money like that. I said, what the fuck's that? I saw your fine son. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, but let me give you an example. All the drink and the girls with players and the staff for that weekend was on me. <laughs> <laughs> we stole no money back for the Christmas party. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking, how am I going to get around the gaffer? <laughs> Gentlemen, this is what I've done. There's a guy in Glasgow called Captain George. He used to do that in the sky, helicopter report, traffic jams and all that. He used to go about, I don't know if you do it often, dear that. Picture the scene, I've hired him. Got permission off Glasgow Airport. Nearly mocking, he's given my kit to Derek White and turned David Captain Jordan. I've got a 10 past 9, Brace Midland flight up. I arrived at 5 to 10, early for once. I came out, came down the steps of the airport, the airplane. We got to Glasgow Airport, met me, put me on a golf cart, and took me around to Captain Jordan's helicopter. I'm jumping the helicopter, and I do the fucking health and safety in eight days. I've been fucking old. <laughs> That's it. I jumped the back. My kid said I'm getting changed. Captain George thought it was fucking hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, I was in the airport. All the boys were fucking laughing. I said the manager was going ballistic. That bastard's not here. One time again, I don't care about his union. He's fucking getting it this time. And then this helicopter is doing it. The guys that would love to see that jump to started running and everything was okay, but I got a little bit carried away. Jumped it too early and nearly fucking killed myself. <laughs> <laughs> I was lying in a heap. <laughs> and I thought it broke both my fucking legs. <laughs> the last thing I heard the Captain George was, no, oh, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> I've got to talk to you, bought me the old Tommy Craig Martin, I thought, fucking got him. <laughs> and guys, to be fair, he bought me the old, he never found me once after that, he was a different class. In fact, came a few of my weddings, he was all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to finish with a couple of characters, Andy spoke about this guy. In 91, I thought he was the best player in the world. Paul Gascoigne, I really did think he was the best player in the world. He's a fucking nutkin, but he's a lovely guy. I was very fortunate to meet Paul. When he was coming through the ranks at Newcastle, I was at West Ham. And he's a magnet. He, he, he just, he, he breaks his boots, he's fucking come up with him. Like, he's, he's one of them, he's a great lad. So I got to know him and all that. And then he went to Tottenham. I'm still a fucking West Ham, so we had a few good fucking parties, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> but he's a great lad. People say, Mike, you've known him for years. You must have good stories about him. I do. I'm going to tell you this story. And I hope I don't offend anyone here, but this is true. This sums up Paul better than any story I can tell you. The five years ago, I used to live in Newcastle. A wee guy called Ian McLeod, boxing phone up and said, we'll get in touch with Paul. I want him to come up and do some dinner. I said, he's here about him last week. He's not a good place, sir. And he went, oh, fuck, man. He goes, go and meet him. I said, fucking no problem. Any excuse to meet Paul, he's a you know, different part. Put you in a picture. Paul Gascoigne is a global superstar. In Newcastle, he is fucking as well. They're all walking up to him going, oh, Paul, fuck, son, you look great. I'm going, fuck, really? You get it, thanks to me. Me and Paul were doing some office here. Jimmy was with me five days there. I don't know. Jimmy said, I'm going to get a candy, walked away. Myself and Paul walked in the street. Everyone's coming up, shaking his hand, walked away. This guy walked up, and the two of them were just cuddling each other. Now you can tell right away, guys, that these guys grew up together, just the way they were acting, and I just stepped aside. I'm cuddling each other, having a laugh. The boy said, Paul, how's your dad? Your family. Paul says, fucking brilliant, different part. He said, the boy, how's your dad? I don't see your dad. He said, the boy's already dead. Paul said, fuck, no, sorry. He said, what happened? He says, I was a big C. Paul looked at him and says, what, did they drown? <laughs> 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 oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, 